we feel that we're finding ourselves in the middle of a generation and um, maybe even at the beginning of an era where we struggle to sit down and have a, a difficult conversation oftentimes. Um, I don't believe that echo chambers force you to interrogate your own beliefs um, and censorship doesn't foster personal growth, but I believe that these things can only be accomplished through conversation, through civil discourse, which is exactly what we're hoping to do here tonight. We're hoping to reestablish a culture of conversation on this campus where neighbors can disagree often to the core of their beliefs um, and stand up from that conversation, stand up from that table and walk away and still come together knowing that we're all part of the same community, that we're all wildcats. Um, and so with that, uh, we invite you, Turning Point invites you, everyone here from the left of the aisle to the right, the front of the room to the back, everyone in here and outside to join in this conversations, in this conversation and all conversations moving forward to have an open mind, open ears, and the willingness to participate in civil discussion. Um, with that, I'd like you guys to join me with put your hands together for the host of the Rubin Report, Dave Rubin. Thank you guys. Wow, I gotta tell you guys, I did not think my day was gonna end up in a hockey rink when I woke up this morning. But here we are. Uh, any hockey fans here? We have some hockey fans? Yeah. All right. All right. I am wearing a cup uh, because it's a free speech event and, you know, <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. All right. I mean, this is kind of crazy. First off, I asked them if we're going to do this at a hockey rink. Can I come in on the Zamboni? But apparently, you know, State and Turning Point doesn't have the money for that kind of thing. Unfortunately, that's tough. Look at you guys. You all came out here to a hockey rink to listen to me talk about free speech. That's pretty cool. I'm very excited. You guys feeling good? All right, there's more outside. I think we have room. There might be a seat back there somewhere. I think we could probably let it more. I mean, it's kind of fitting that this is sort of how uh, we ended up at a, at a hockey rink right now, if you think about it. I mean, you know, uh, all, the, all the officers and, and policemen that are here securing this thing, these guys are doing their jobs, doing a great job. Actually, give them a round of applause for <laughs> making sure that nothing crazy going to happen. I guarantee you, you're not going to hear anything remotely close to hate speech or anything like that. There actually is no such thing as hate speech, and we'll talk about that too, but you're not going to hear any hate out of me, I guarantee you. Uh, you know, Candace Owens, who uh, seven words really put her on the map this week. I love the way Candace Owens thinks from Kanye and just seemingly has, has changed the world. I, I actually think, uh, putting aside what your feelings are on Kanye for a moment, I think that him saying that, offering a little oxygen for people that want to think a little bit differently, just a little bit differently. If you don't want to just take democratic dogma or leftist dogma or progressive dogma, if you don't want to take that as the Bible, you know, as the word from God, that you need a little room to think differently. And I think you guys probably do think a little bit differently. I hope we have, I can see some interesting diversity. The left loves diversity, meaning the color of your skin and your sexuality and all that stuff and your gender. And that's all, that's all well and fine, but that's actually not the diversity that matters. The diversity that matters is what's going on in your head. What do you actually think, right? I mean, imagine if I was to look at you guys and I can just, pick, I mean, I can look at any of you and think, all right, white guy there. He must think that. Black guy there, he must think that. Asian girl there, she must think that. That actually is the essence of prejudice, okay? That is the essence of prejudice. Prejudice, which means to prejudge. And if you look at someone and think that you know what they should think because of the color of their skin or their sexuality or anything else, you actually are the one that is acting bigoted. I mean, that's, that's actually the truth. That's sort of the reverse of how it's spun these days. But the only way that we can actually have conversations, the only way that we can actually figure out what's going on and figure out how can we really talk to each other is if you look at people as individuals, not as a collective. And this is kind of the key to everything that's sort of wrong with society right now. We've somehow figured out that if we group each other, right, if we group each other and we play this really awful game of identity politics that's really the reverse of everything that this nation was founded upon. You know, think about this for a second. You guys are here, University of New Hampshire, I assume most of you go to the university here, you're at a great school. I guarantee that virtually every single one of you have it better 
than your grandparents or your great-grandparents. Virtually every, if really think about it, think about your grandparents for a second. Think about your great-grandparents, you probably didn't know them. I guarantee you what you have at 19, 20, 21 years old, however, you, however old you are, is, is a lot better. It's a world better than the way they had it. No matter what color you are, religion you are, or anything. And this is what identity politics has put us up against. It's placed us in this situation where we're grouping people based on their immutable characteristics. So if you're black, you should think this. If you're Muslim, you should think this. If you're gay, you should think this. And this, which really, as you guys know, this is what intersectionality is all about. The idea behind intersectionality being that if you take all of these groups, you can kind of put them together like a transformer or something and that they will become something stronger. But actually what's been proven in everything that's happening in society right now is that they're becoming weaker. They're actually in a sort of oppression Olympics where they're competing with each other for victimhood. And, and victimhood is not virtue. And that's really important. You know what's virtue, guys? It's what the motto of this state is. Live free or die. Do whatever. Yeah. I mean, that's what's so kind of depressing about the fact that we had to switch venues here. I mean, the state motto is live free or die, or I guess live free or go to a hockey rink. Um, but that's what virtue is, living free or die. Figure out what you believe. What do you believe? And fight for that. Relentlessly fight for that. Even by the end of this thing, and, and we'll do a robust Q&A, and I'm happy to hear from any of you guys that disagree with me on all this stuff. Whatever you believe, if you fight for it honestly and, and using your mind and your faculties, and not because you silenced people or because you pulled fire alarms or called in bomb threats, if you fight for it. Yeah, uh, all right, I agree. Black lives do matter. Tate, all right, I, I'm with you. Good. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, can someone shut off the robots? I don't know how we're going to do this. Uh, yeah, guys, I gotcha. We'll get to it. Do you, do you think anyone's here for you guys? Do you, is that what you think, what's going on here? Black lives matter. I like this guy more. Listen, guys, guys, guys. Guys, do you think anyone's here for you? Do you understand what you're doing right now? Hey, listen, listen, listen. Guys, guys, guys. You, look at me, look at me. You, I mean, you can at least look at me. There you go. All right. Look, 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 look. Do you, know, you think anyone's here for you? Do you think anyone's here for you? I agree Black Lives Matter. I agree Black Lives Matter. Do you know how to play the quiet game? We'll try it that way. Guys, guys. You listen, you got the script down. I'm impressed with the repetition. <laughs> Does any, I'm, you know. Guys. Okay. Here, let's try this. I see some black people in the audience. Could, could someone ask them to be quiet? Would that maybe work? Guys, guys, come on. You see? Thank you, sister. Guys, 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 you are what is wrong with society right now. You, you are proving it right now. You are proving it right now. This nonsensical. Guys, this epic, nonsensical, self-righteous bullshit. Sit down. Sit down. Yeah, I know. Yell louder. Oh, God. Get laid. Like, go do something with your lives. So pathetic. No one's here for you. Yeah. You know what? I'll give you a cookie if you can say something else. How about that? I got a whole tray of cookies back there. No? Yeah, do you think I don't think Black Lives Matter? What, what are you going, oh, she's checking her phone to make sure she got the script right. Okay, come on now. Come on, you can do it, you can do it. Take, take a seat, take a seat. Yeah. Okay. Remember guys, we're the intolerant ones. We are the intolerant ones, right? You know, you can see all you guys getting real violent on them, you know, nobody's here for them, but guys, uh, what are we gonna do about this? All right. Okay. All right, five more, five more. Four, three, two, one. Oh, I, thought, I really thought you were with me on that. Um, okay, all right, hold on, I can do this, I can do this. Um, guys, seriously, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. It's pathetic, you're pathetic human beings, really. I'm all about open exchange. This is what I do for a living. I will gladly 
take all your questions all night long. You are what is wrong with society. You, sir, right there. You are what's wrong with society. And you, ma'am, you are what's wrong with society. You, yeah. Hey. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to kick these guys out. I know the police are happy to kick you guys out. Oh, well. <laughs> Just refresh me for a sec. What were you saying again? Because I, I, yeah, just relax, relax. Okay. I believe black lives matter. I believe every life matters. I believe that we should not be prejudiced towards everyone, anyone, and we should not have laws that are dictated, that are different for anyone. We should be treating everyone equal. That is the beauty of America. I'm going to talk to my friends right here. The beauty of this country is that people from every walk of life have come here, no matter the color of their skin or their religion, or whatever they came with. Look what it says on the, on the Statue of Liberty. You know what I mean? She didn't say, bring us your best. She said, bring us your poor, your huddled masses. And you know what's happened? Because of the incredible freedoms that we have given people in this country, everyone, look around this room. This is diversity. But it's, as I said earlier, it's not just diversity of color. It's diversity of thought. And I'm going to come up here. I'm going to talk about a lot of things that the conservatives aren't happy about. And conservative groups invite me to do that. So. I appreciate that you've quieted down. And if you grant me the same respect that I'll grant you, that's how you change things. But that, that, what you just did right there, that's not how you change things. Or it is how you change things, just not change things for the better. Anyway, how's it going on this side, guys? Anyone want to get anything off their, their chest? Um, so this scourge of identity politics, it truly, it truly is rotting away at everything that's right with this country. The country was founded on the idea of the melting pot, right? That you come here from wherever you came. Wherever you came, more people have come to America to make a better life for themselves than any place in the history of the world. That is absolutely true. Does that mean it's perfect? Does, no. Does that mean we don't, we've made mistakes? Absolutely. Does that mean that there are injustices now? Of course. But there is no place, which is why no one ever leaves. Are, are any of you guys planning on leaving America? Yeah, nobody goes. Even Lena Dunham, she's still here. It would be nice if she left, but she's still here, okay? Nobody leaves, and that, this is the irony. So you have this set of people now who go on and on about identity politics and everything that's wrong with America and we're this evil patriarchy and we're this evil racist society, and they demand at the same time, I love this one, they demand at the same time that we should have open borders so that I guess the other people can share in the horrors that are America. That is not sensible. You see what I'm saying? It's not sensible, people. What is sensible is coming together regardless of what your differences are. And the only way you do that is if you view people as individuals, that every single one of you, that I can look at you right there, looking at me with the glasses, you, we were, we were having a moment there. Uh, you're looking away from me. OK, I'll look at somebody else. How you doing, buddy? Right here. The only way I can judge you, I know nothing about you, nothing about you. I know nothing about you. But all I can figure out is that if we had a conversation, I could figure out what you think and why you think it. And hopefully, if you thought some things that I thought were wrong through civility, I could get you to think differently, and perhaps you could get me to think differently. So let's talk about some of our differences, actually, because Turning Point invites me to all of these things. And Charlie has no problem being on stage with me. And we have plenty of differences. I am I'm for gay marriage. I even married a dude. I mean, that's, uh, yeah, I'm gay. OK, zippity damn dude. I'm, I thought I was going to get an applause for my oppression, but you know, all right. <laughs> Um, yeah, it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. What you should want are equal rights. So any of you can marry whoever you want to marry. You want equal rights. That's all you want. You don't want extra rights. The, the conservatives in, invite me to these places. I'm what I would describe as begrudgingly pro-choice. I think it's a horrible decision to have to make. I know two women in the last year of my life who, who had to have abortions or who chose to have abortions. I know this is, a, for the conservatives, this is, this is a bridge too far. And I've had plenty of people on my show. I had a debate with Ben Shapiro about abortion. And you know I've picked uh, 20 weeks as the, I like where this one's going. <laughs> oh, is that rain? Is that? What, what, I'm going to need a little more on that one. Yeah. Is this a local thing? What's going on? Do you want, you want to ask me something? Yeah, you can ask me something. See, this is, this is what happens every time. Truly. Ma'am, if you want to ask me something, I'd love to hear a question from you. For, no, so you don't have a question. 
Do, is there anything I said that you didn't like? Did you not like anything? Look, you don't want to comment on that either. You see what's going on here? I really want you guys to understand this because this is so consistent. We can get some robots and clones here, which, you know, repeating some stuff. And now you have a, a jar with a whatever the hell you got in there. And I'm, I am seriously willing to have a conversation with you right now. Let's do it. Let's do it. But you won't question me and you won't tell me you didn't like anything. Who's winning here, do you think, right now? Who's changing more minds, me or you? Yeah, I think I think I made my point. All right. Yeah, no, it's here. He's got some moves over here. It's not true what they say about white people can't dance. I saw that. That was very impressive. He had that two white guys have two moves, like a shoulder thing and a, a hip thing. All right, all right. Put your little toy away. Uh, God. Yeah, well, that's what I, but, this, but see, this is what's happened. This is what has led us here to the irony. This is so ironic. You guys don't remember this, but 10 years ago, when you guys were whatever you were, 10, 11, 12 years old, the conservatives were the intolerant side. The conservatives were the ones that were screaming against gay marriage, and the conservatives were the ones talking about all sorts of other stuff that was actually intolerant. This is intolerant now. And you don't get extra credit for your skin color, I hate to tell you. So, you, I, I mean, that's just how it is. I, I would love to have a conversation with you, and you want to rattle around a can. Okay, so that's fine. But this is what has happened. You guys, the conservatives, the conservatives, oh, how many of you actually consider yourselves conservatives? Make some noise. Make some noise if you consider yourself conservative. Let's do a little poll. Yeah. Good for you guys. You're going to have jobs in the future. You're going to have cars and family and property and things, and it's pretty good. That's sweet. All right. How many of you consider yourself libertarian? Any libertarians? You can, you can do noise instead of clapping. You're all very respectful here. Yeah, all right. Libertarians, you're going to smoke a lot of pot. That's great. That's great. You're going to argue about whether driver's licenses should be real. Um, I love libertarians. I mean, really, fundamentally, I think I'm probably, although we're going to talk about classical liberalism in a second, I think actually, more than anything, I'm a libertarian in that I want you to live free, and I want to live free, and the only exchange that we can have there is that basically I'm going to have my stuff, you're going to have your stuff, and you can't just come onto my property and take my shit. As long as we get that far, that's a pretty good society. And that means that occasionally people are going to say things that upset you. That means that people are going to do things that upset you, but that's the beauty of this thing. You know, there are some societies where nobody's going to say anything that upsets you. You know where that is? That's North Korea. You don't want to be there. You don't want to be there. You are going to be upset every now and again. But you know what? Words are not violence. I know that the left has tried to trick you into thinking that because somebody says something that upsets you, that you're either allowed to punch them or silence them or call in a bomb threat or force a venue to have to move. But that is not your right. You have the right to free speech. And your right to free speech, the whole purpose of your right to free speech, is that you have to respect someone else's right to free speech. Now, what you can do, by the way, is protest. I hope that there are, thank you, I hope that there are protesters that are, are or were protesters out there with as many signs as they want to have doing their thing. And as long as you do it peacefully and you don't encroach on anyone else's rights, that's, you're supposed to do that in a free society. It's beautiful. But if you use your free speech to infringe on somebody else, is you're actually not part of civil society at all. So, all right, back to the libertarians. So I, I like the libertarians. I, I voted for Gary Johnson. I had Gary Johnson on my show. He didn't know his name. He wasn't the best candidate ever. Um, Aleppo, he just, yeah, not a, not a great candidate. He, he was the first guy that ever turned me against weed because he couldn't remember a fucking thing. I mean, he really was just a terrible, terrible candidate. This would have been the year, right? Our 2016 would have been the year for a libertarian candidate. I mean, we had two of what I would say are the worst candidates in, in at least as candidates. We can talk about Trump in a second. But at least as candidates, we had two of the worst, most polarizing candidates ever. And all a libertarian had to do was come in and understand some basic shit. And Gary just <laughs> dropped the ball. He just, every interview, it was like watching a Muppet, like, <laughs> I don't, but then it's too easy to beat up on him. So forget Gary Johnson. All right, how many of you guys consider yourselves classical liberals? Classical liberals. All right, a couple classical liberals there. Very respectful. That's what I like. Um, so classical liberalism, this is interesting because people say to me, well, what's the difference? Dave, you say you're a classical liberal. And how is that different than being on the left? How is that different than being a progressive? And a classical liberal, basically, it's really simple. 
if you believe in the individual that I was talking about before, if you believe that the government has some role to exist, that the government has to do something, but not everything. So our founders actually, mostly I think, were classical liberals. Our founders basically created an incredible system where we have 50 states now, and we have a federal government that should do very little. The federal government should make sure that you know they're taking care of our borders. They should make sure that our states aren't warring with each other. But beyond that, the federal government actually shouldn't do that much. That, if you believe in that, if you believe there's some role for government, but not some massive government that we have, then I think you're basically a classical liberal. So the classical liberals and the libertarians are pretty much in the same spot. And ironically, now the conservatives have sort of come in and fit into that thing as well. So there's a pretty big tent developing on the right while the left is just purging every one of their free thinkers. I mean, every one of their, look what happened to Kanye this week. Forget what you think about Kanye, forget what you think his politics are or any of you like his music or not, it's completely irrelevant. Look what happened, he tweets seven words about a relative, a girl that I know and like a lot, but a, but a relatively unknown person in Candace Owens and suddenly everybody, the lead story on Twitter moments was Kanye West tweets support for far right Candace Owens. Far right Candace Owens, a, a, a black girl who happens to be a conservative is now far right. All right, yeah, I'm with you. Solidarity against hate, I am with you. I'm with you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys working with these two? You guys should definitely hang out with them because I think it would be fun. Um, I'm, getting, I'm with you. I'm with you guys. Solidarity against hate. I don't think you should hate anyone based on their sexuality or their, I, oh Lord. All right, yeah. All right, here we go, here we go. So, yeah, they, they messed up the rhythm on that one. I caught that. All right, yeah, I got you guys. Yeah, Let me, let's try this. How many of you here are for hate? How many of you are for hate? Is anyone for hate? If we're at a hate rally here, as they would have us believe, anyone for hate? Nobody for it. Guys, do you think you're helping your cause? This is what I'm trying to tell you. Do you think you're helping your cause? Here, do you have any questions for me? I'll gladly, no, no question. You just made a point, you're gonna let it be. All right, there you go. They offered you the mic. So we're, we're gonna offer the mic for this nonsense. Um, this is what the problem is. Do you guys see this? I mean, you really need to grasp yourselves around this. And, and why does this keep happening? Why does this sort of endless droning and repetitive sort of pointless statements? Everyone's against hate. Everyone that's sensible is against hate. But why does this keep happening? And there's a reason it keeps happening. Because leftism and progressivism and collectivism, grouping people by those immutable characteristics has been so ingrained and taught to you guys at colleges and it has been so rewarded by the mainstream media and it has been coddled. You've, you guys have been coddled to think that what you think automatically has to be right and that all the people that came before you had no fucking clue as to what they were doing. But some of them did. Some of them did. Some of them had bad ideas and some of them had good ideas. And some people in this room have bad ideas and some have good ideas. But just chanting things because you're upset actually has no meaning. And that's why I still, when we do the Q&A at the end, I will gladly go to you guys first if you can come up with an original thought and, and tell me what you think of something. But, that, but that's the truth. That, that sadly is the truth. And that's why, oddly, the right now is the home for free thinking. I'm shocked. This was completely not what I ever thought would happen. But yet that is where we are right now. What's that? What do you got for me? She's mouthing something at me. What do you got? What do you got? Oh, not, yeah, not bad, you know, it's all right, combatgent.com, okay. Um, <laughs> I don't even, I don't get like a referral fee on that or anything, that's, uh, that's just the truth. But okay, so look, this idea of identity politics has wrecked things, and I want to give you a couple examples of how it has done this. So uh, I assume most of you have seen some of my shows at least, I want to mention a couple of my guests. So Jordan Peterson, how many of you guys know Jordan Peterson? Okay. Jordan Peterson, for those of you that don't know him, he was a, a psychology professor at the University of Toronto for the past 30 years or so. He's done tremendous academic work for many years. Really wasn't a public person. He had written one book a couple years back. And about two years ago, Canada was gonna pass, it wasn't quite gonna be a law, it was gonna sort of be a directive, but we know how these things sort of operate. It starts with you know some subtle thing and then eventually becomes a law, that if you misgendered 
somebody, you could be fined, and then potentially this would lead to imprisonment at some point. Now, let's be very clear here. I am 100% for equality for trans people. Jordan, who I know extremely well, we're going on tour together. I'm not what? I, I, I got no... I got no problem with you. I don't know what you're talking about. I have trans friends. I don't know, what, what do you mean? I, I think you should. Yeah, well, it's all right. I'm only gay after 10, it's all right. Um, well, well, so, all right, all right, let's do it. You seem to have thoughts, so that's pretty good. So what, what have I said that is, that is so offensive to you? I am 100% for you to have the same exact dignity that everyone else in this country has. I am 100% for you to have every, every law and legal protection that anyone else in this country has. So what is it that you don't uh, want me to say that I have said here? Well, I was about to get to that until you started screaming. Yeah, all right. Well, you know what? Here's the thing. We have a right to free speech. You don't have... Hang on, hang on. Listen, okay, I got you. I got you. Okay, so look, you know what? Here's the deal. In, in free Western societies, you have the right to free speech. You don't, you don't have the right to not be offended. Now, I am not for people running down the street and, and saying anything hateful to you. But really think about what you're calling for here. Think about what you're calling for here. What you're saying is that if someone walking down the street says, mis misgenders you, right? That you want this person to be fined or put in jail. That, that's what you think is right? Is that, is that correct? I don't want to put words in your mouth. You're right, and you know how people should be held accountable? By themselves, by their family, by their friends by their community, not the government, and this was, again was the government, but see how I already got you to move on your position there? I think anyone can understand that you wouldn't want the government coming in and telling people what you can and cannot say. So Jordan said, I am not against trans people, and it's very clear to me that he's not. The earth is flat. Finally, someone making some sense out there. <laughs> So you really need to understand this. You don't, you don't have a right to be not offended. I wish, we all wish that we lived in a, a better place where magically everybody was wonderful, where magically everyone was sweet and decent. We don't live in that world, but if you think that the government forcing people to, do, to act as you wish they would act is gonna bring peace and love and harmony, it actually will only bring the complete reverse. Every time in the history of the world that the government promised utopia, it brought dystopia. Every time that the government expanded to create some magical society, it brings societies that kill millions of people. So what you should want is exactly what you have in America right now, which is that you have equality. You, you can have a job. You can live free. I hope you have someone in your life that you love. You can have all of those things. And if the government started cracking down on you because you happen to be trans, I will be your biggest ally. I will be out there with you every day. So you really need to be careful what you ask for. I get it. You're coming from a place where you don't want to be hurt. Nobody wants to be hurt, right? Everybody has had bad shit said about them. Everyone's got something they're insecure about. Everyone's got it. But believe me, the idea that the government is going to solve that problem, it is not the way to go. Did, did we get anywhere there? I, I kind of felt good about that. No, we didn't get anywhere. Okay. All right, we, we didn't get anywhere. I think maybe I got somewhere with a couple of others. That's all right. Um, this is why conversation is so important, guys, right? Like, we can just kind of yell at each other, and this is what's happening, and this is what the media wants us to do. You know, you can turn on CNN, and no one in their right mind is learning anything from CNN. You turn on CNN, and you get eight screens of yelling people who don't even know how to tie their shoes telling you that they know how to run the world. It's all nonsense. Actually, the best way to watch CNN, put it on mute and put the Looney Tunes theme song on. Um, <laughs> is far, far better than what CNN is showing you. But all of, but this is what, this is why you guys have turned onto the online news. However you get your news, whether you're on the left and you maybe watch TYT or you're on the right and you listen to Ben Shapiro or whatever else it is, that, there's a beautiful thing there. It is now on you guys to figure out what you believe. Find sources that you care about. If you think that Dave Rubin is a bigoted, hateful whatever, 
don't watch. I mean, that's the beauty. You don't have to show up. You don't have to support. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, this is what the exchange of freedom is all about. Um, I feel I could, I could keep going here, but I'm kind of tempted to just jump right into the questions because it seems like some of you guys have some questions and I'm truly happy to, we could start with all people that disagree with everything I said here. So how, how are we doing the questions? I think there's a couple microphones around here. So we've got some mics up there. So if you've got a question and we've got one down here, please come on down. I, we can start with you right there. I feel like you've got something for me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah let's roll. Just stand here. Oh, you hold it. Free speech, but he's going to hold the mic for me, okay? Uh, you can get... Unless you want to... I mean, see, see, you see how silly. You're coming in, you're coming in ready, ready to fight. Interesting that he's holding the mic. All right, why don't you give her the mic? Let's, let's... Yeah, why don't you pass me the mic? <laughs> big win, big win. Okay. I was serious about the suit, by the way. So... You don't believe hate speech exists. No. And you... The Supreme Court agrees with me, by the way. Great. You and the rest of the people who are here with you, or who are supposed to be here with you, claim that people have a victimhood complex and that anything regarding racism or sexism or whatever ism it is that we're talking about is fake news and everybody is just out here wanting to be a victim as if that's something, you know, that people, you know, I wake up every morning and I say, wow, how can I be a, vi a victim despite Dave Rubin or Charlie Kirk? I, I, so I just want to understand. Do, I just want to understand. Yeah. What, like, what does it take for, for, you know, folks on your end of the aisle to understand that people have lived experiences and who wake up every day, every single day in this country, whether you think their victimhood complex is real or not, and they don't feel like a part of this country. And you can sit and blame them all you want, but this campus is a great example right here. When we have people on this campus who are claiming that it is all sunshine and rainbows and they have the administration on their side, and then the reality is that biased incidents reports and hate crimes have gone up. Yeah, so and people have been spit on, and people have been threatened, and people have been told to go home to their country even though they were born in fucking New Jersey. Yeah. So I just want to understand, where's the, like do, like, do I have to get lynched? Like, does somebody have to, like, murder me? Like, does somebody have to, like, so kill couple, me? Okay, does somebody have to physically you. harass me? What will it take for it to be hate speech? And when do I actually become a victim? When I'm dead? Okay. All right, great question. Great question. That's great. Yeah. All right. It's a great question. So first off, the Supreme Court has ruled that hate speech doesn't exist in that you can do basically, you can say whatever you want, short of yelling fire in a crowded theater or calling for direct violence to someone. So right now, you can say anything to me. You can literally say anything to me. I'm sure you're thinking of a couple things. And you can say whatever you want to me. And guess what? I'll, I'll survive. And that's the price that you have to pay to live in a free society. So let me kick it back to you for a second. So first off, you, there was a little uh, miscommunication in the way you presented that, which is, Racism exists. I don't think racism doesn't exist. Of course, there are bigoted people. There are people who are, are misogynists that may not like you because you're a woman. There are people that are, are, don't like gay people, so they won't like me. There are people that are truly prejudiced against black people in every other situation. The idea that the government can come in and manage and fix all of those things is crazy. And we live in a society that has done more to free more people than any other society truly in the history of the world. But I will kick it back to you for a second. So tell me about, tell me about your oppression. I mean, tell me about what you're dealing with and how the government can fix it. It doesn't mean that bad people don't exist, but tell me about your oppression. Maybe, maybe we can work through something. It's my favorite song. <laughs> Wait, that one was legit. It was your mom? Nice, all right. I mean, tell me about your oppression. What so I have no reason to sit and talk about my own oppression because that's just like mental energy. Well, that, I mean, like, unless I'm this. going to be paid to talk about my. Violence by violence. Hate speech does 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 violence. Ladies, ladies, Hate I'll gladly take a question from you. Have we established that already? Okay, so so far we have some repetitive droning statements. And then when I kick it back to someone to ask about their oppression, she wants to be paid for it. You know what, I, 
Let me see what I got here. No, why don't you PayPal me? Yeah, well, let me see what I can do here. Venmo me. I got... Let's see what I got here. All right. Twenty bucks. I got twenty bucks. I will pay you. I will pay you. Shh. Okay. So what would you prefer? What would you prefer that the government? Okay, guys. I get it. I don't want people to say bad things either. Ugh. All right. I wish I could get off to the sound of my own voice. Wouldn't that be awesome? You seem to get off the sound of your own voice, yeah. fam. See, you're, you're angry. You're, you're angry, and there's no reason to be angry. You're, you're standing in front I'm of... I'm not some, angry. You're standing in front of someone that's truly... That comes from the place that you are in right now. I was a lefty my entire life. I get it. I get it. Interesting how you've put a political label on me already. Uh, okay. All right. All right. All right. Let's, let's move on. We tried. But really, if you want to tell me your oppression, I'll give you 20 bucks. I'll I'm, gladly do it. First of all... Yeah. Thanks. So easy with you guys. All right. Just took the words right. Yeah. She don't have to tell you. What's that? Oh, she's tossing another twenty. All right, we got forty bucks for you. What What are you doing here? What, 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 don't you have hobbies? They have a First Amendment right to be here and yeah. say what they want to you. Well, you know, actually, part of the part of the freedom. Part of the freedom and the contractual exchange we have as free people living in a free society is that you're not supposed to use your free speech to drown out someone else's. So I'm truly asking you. I am truly. So I just want to know. I just uh, again another no, 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 question. No, 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 no. Where you is get... this boundary where someone else's free speech is infringing on your free speech? You, you, when, I mean, when I told you those boundaries. When free speech literally infringes on other people's existence. So I just no, wanna, but see, where's just, the boundary you see, you're for you? Up things. So look, you have. I told you what the boundaries are. The boundaries are you can't yell. Fire in a crowded theater and you can't call directly for violence. But short of that, you are allowed in a free society. So to Dave, say, I just have a question. I would prefer those people what's your not background? say it. What's that? You are. What's your background? Right, you so are you can gay? play some ridiculous. No, no, I just have a question. I have a question. Yeah. You are gay and you are Jewish, correct? Yeah. So I abhor anti-Semitism. So by your own like standard and logic. People can say shit about the Jews, yeah. You're oh, allowed. Really? You're allowed. And, and I think, have family on both sides of my think, family die in the Holocaust, and I grew up around Holocaust survivors. Do you think yeah. that the speech that is espoused against Jewish people does not promote violence against them? You are allowed to in a free society. I would prefer that people be nicer, right? So I would you would prefer, prefer somebody espouse anti-Semitism, yeah. and that may or may not lead to violence Against you can't Jewish directly people. call for violence to people, but what you can do, it's the exchange of freedom. Would you prefer... Do you think there's a correlation between hating Jews and wanting to kill them? Yes or no question. D you're asking me questions. All, right, well, all right, let's move on. Yes or no. I, you know, like wow. I'm in a hostage situation over here. I can't believe that's like a not right. <laughs> question well, let's that you can't a, Let's move on to another question. Really I would... I would prefer that people not say bad shit about Jews or bad shit about Muslims or gay people or anyone, but the freedom... Yes or no question. All right, well, well, yes what was the question? The question is... Yeah. The question is... You guys are so tolerant. You guys are such good guys. You're such good please, guys. Okay, it's so fascinating yeah. that you claim the left has a victim complex. Yeah, we're yeah, Every time it. somebody yeah. yells at you, you also put on the victim complex. I'm not, I'm not anybody's victim. Whose victim am I? All right. Whose victim am I? Whose victim am I? I don't want anything from you. I want you to live your life in peace. Go. Go live your right. life in peace. I don't want anything from you. And I don't want anything but, yeah. from you either. Yeah. All right. I just have a All question. Right. Let's, let's the move question on. question is, do you, believe <laughs> that, do you believe that people who say they hate Jews I believe will not be likely to want to attack Jews. You, they yes, might, no question. They might You're a be, Jewish you have, man. I'm really yeah, shocked. They might be, but you have the right to say mean things in a free society. Do you, you think anti-Semitism is just a mean thing? Oh, Should we go, yeah. like, can I go to Hitler's grave and tell him, you know, it was just all a mean thing? Yeah, you can. Wow. You can. You can go to Hitler's grave and tell a dead person that uh, he was mean. You can. 
That's freedom. You know, That's your ancestors freedom. are ruling in their grave. That's what I can tell you right now. Yeah, my ancestors who, who died in a genocide are rolling in their grave. What yeah. leads to yeah. a genocide? What right, leads right, to right. violence? Listen, listen, uh, we, we've done it. We've Whoever done just it. called me pathetic. Yeah. No, no I'm asking him a question. All, All right. my anti-Semitic, when I'm saying, do All you right. believe that listen. speech, hate speech against Jews will lead to violence? All right, so, well, let's move on. Let's move on. Well, I'm happy to do, I'll literally do this with all of you. I just have a question, like, like we're supposed to be having a civil discourse. Like, why, why do you want me to shut up? I thought this was civil discourse. You realize there's a, there's a couple hundred people here that all would love to share their it's thoughts. It's not I a think, couple hundred. I, I think I've given. Yeah, how are we doing right here? Here, here, why don't we give this lady the mic right here in the red right here. Let's, let's mix it up. All right. Yeah, guys, other people have questions. Let's move on. See, this is the problem. You, you're not oppressed. You're entitled. That's I your problem. Not, you know what's very yeah. interesting? You're not impressed. You think anyone what's came here? What's very interesting you is think that anyone nowhere came here to have hear I you? stated that Nobody I am oppressed. Came here. Nobody came here for you. Sit down. Please listen Sit to me down. because I am speaking no. right now. I know nowhere in what I have said have I claimed I'm oppressed, so you just put those words in my mouth, right. too. Bye-bye. Okay. okay, okay, go ahead. I'm here practicing my First Amendment right. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to give the mic Listen, to somebody pretty... out of respect. To whoever wants to shit talk me now when I put this mic yeah. down, I just want you to know that your opinion literally means bullshit to me. And if you agree with the concept, yeah, yeah I have a right to say it, so I'm going to say oh, it. So you have a right to offend them. Ah, let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. You I have can a right offend, to offend people ah, when they have a personal vendetta against my character. Ah. I'm not going after people. Ah, so you should be writing the laws of society and telling people who they can offend and who they can't offend and when and when they can't Anybody do it. can offend yeah. anybody, but uh, there's a huge difference between now saying anybody you can should offend anybody. die because good. you're Jewish or black yeah. and just normally being offended. I don't want anyone to die because they're Jewish I'm or not black. saying that you're saying that, yeah, you're but not I'm really saying, saying that when you espouse you're saying absolute a lot of free speech, okay. that right, is what de facto on. you are right. endorsing. Yeah, I don't think you know what de facto means either. But all Okay, right, let's, let's I just want to let you know that yeah. I am a double major and I do research all for actual organizations. All right, great. You literally do not know who I am. Yeah, I don't know who you are. You do are. not. I, I don't. So I don't, don't belittle know this guy me. Either. Uh, you know what's fascinating? Yeah. I have not gone. I have not said a single thing about your personal character up until this point. You, you have belittled me, said that I don't understand what words mean, have told me to shut up, have told me that I'm taking up space. Isn't that fascinating? So who really is the intolerant one here? Because all I've done is just talk pretty loudly on a mic. Okay. Unless you have a problem with a woman talking pretty loudly on a mic. <laughs> Yeah. Somebody else can get a question because I so graciously believe in free speech. Yeah. Yeah. It's all good. It's all good, guys. This is this is what it's all about, really. This is what it's all about. It's a strawberry. Notice in the free society that we live in, no one's coming for you now. You can post that on Twitter. You can do whatever you want. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Hey, Dave, a big fan. Thanks. Um, just want to say, start off before I get to the question, is that um, my parents came from Afghanistan. They escaped the day before the Russians invaded Christmas of 1979. Um, so they all live in America now. Uh, they love it. They would never leave. Um, and every day growing up, uh, you know, I, not every day, you know, just sometimes, like, my skin's a little bit darker. I grew up in a very white neighborhood. I got some offhand comments about me being Afghani, terrorist jokes, everything. I was like, all right, whatever. That's how I, that's how I dealt with it. I said, whatever. I didn't internalize my oppression, as some people thought may think I did. I just really didn't care, because if they're going to make jokes, they're really not going to go that far, because people are truly intolerant. I don't think they're going to really go anywhere in life. So that's what I'm saying about that, is if you're truly, people who are truly intolerant, aren't really going to get anywhere, and so I just don't let that stuff bother me. Um, but I wanted to ask about Marcus Meachin. Do you know him? Um, the Count Dankula, the guy who... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just wanted to ask, like, uh, how ridiculous do you think it is for a joke about yeah. that, of turning a pug into a Nazi? How ridiculous do you think it is that man was arrested, his life was put on hold for two years? Like, I, it was just insane to me. Like, It's was, completely insane. So if, are you all familiar with this story? So this is a, an online YouTube comic uh, who... Basically, he was doing a joke. It was a joke, and he had his, his dog do the Hitler salute. Now, again, 
I am not for the Hitler salute. I am not for Nazis. I am not for white supremacism or racism of any kind or anything like that. But the guy made a joke. And you can say it's a shitty joke. He's a bad comic. It's a tasteless joke. All of those things. But in a free society, you have a right to do those things. You have a right to offend. It is on you as the person on the receiving end of that to decide whether that is going to ruin your day or make you stronger in what your beliefs are or anything else. So it's, by the way, the, the, the real issue with this is every one of us, every one of us, even if you just hate me, every one of us should be thanking whatever you believe in that we are here. We have the protections. He would have been able to do that in the United States. Now, you may not like it, again, but we have the protections that allow you to live your life to the maximum potential in this country. We live in a place that a young guy whose parents came from Afghanistan, a war torn country, can come here and not make excuses and do everything that you want to do in your life, and you're going to do amazing things. I have no doubt about it. That is a beautiful thing. You have no desire to play the victim. You're going to go out there and bust your ass. And yes, will there be someone that you might want to work for that's going to go, wow, he's got brown skin and I'm a racist and I'm not going to hire him. That might happen. It might. But you know what? Someone else will find you. And the more that these companies, if there's a big company out there that's saying we're not going to hire this person or that person based on skin color or based on race, they will crumble. Yeah. Look what's happening in Silicon Valley right now. It's actually amazing. It's amazing what's happening in Silicon Valley right now. Peter Thiel is leaving Silicon Valley because leftist, oh, you got to work on getting that. Th oh, she's got to back up. Um, it's incredible. I, Peter I Thiel believe... is leaving Silicon Valley because leftism has caused a situation where they cannot even think straight. They cannot come up with new ideas. That's why there are no new apps. Where's the new Twitter? Where's the new Snapchat? Where's the new Facebook? It can't come out of the group thing. So whatever you're going to do in your life, you're going to do great things. I have no doubt. Yeah. Why don't we go right here? Red jacket right here. Yeah. My, my question is, you're trying to lead a civil discourse, Dave, and why is it that some people believe that it's okay to be disrespectful and interrupt so that some of us can't hear the presentation and hear other questions and hear your views on things? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know that I'm the right guy to be asking that. I, I, will, gladly, I will gladly talk to all these people. I mean, really, that's how you, the way you change minds, the way you change minds, guys, is you, you sit with people and you try to explain your position, not trying to drown out people. I mean, that's just, that's just how it's done in every, in every safe... It, what's that? You can, yes, you can. You're right. No, but you're right. You can do it. Notice, no one's coming for you. Nobody's coming for you. No one's silencing you. But do you, do you have a question or a comment? Do, do you have a question or a comment? Yeah, all right. I mean, this is what happens every time. I mean, but partly what's going on here, guys, is that the reason to critically think has become so de degraded. Okay. The reason it's become so so hurtful to hear words is because the left has owned all of the places of learning for so long that every time someone comes in and says, I believe in low taxes, or I believe in something that's a little bit out of leftist mainstream, people immediately think that means you're racist or bigoted or homophobic or something, and it's, it simply isn't the truth. Learn how to sit with people in a free society who are a little bit different than you. Learn how to sit with people and change their minds. But if you think change, you're going to change people's minds by drowning them out, it just doesn't work. You may get some temporary wins, right? You can get some applause and you can get some temporary wins. But you will not win in the long term because you will create a society that simply will not be tolerant of you one day. Because one day you will be on the other side of it. And there will be a young person that believes in something that you don't believe in. Or believes something that you think is hate speech. And they will come for you too. And the only way, thank you, the only way... The only way to ensure protections for everybody is to make sure that we're all treated equally under the law, and that's what, that's what we've got right now. We've got some more moves from a white guy over here. All right, what else? Where are we? Right over here. Sorry. Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, hi, so I just had a question just because I wanted to clarify what you said earlier about how you think we shouldn't be passing laws against 
like speech that could be hateful or is hateful or whatever just because sure. it's limiting people's freedoms. But I think what I wanted to ask was, so when you say like limiting free speech to some degree, do you think that could mean that you once you pass one law that's limiting one thing for free speech, then it could turn into, oh, then you're limiting another thing for free speech. And then yeah. you like have this whirlwind of then you live in a society where people just can't say anything because yes. I feel like it's too, I guess what's the word I want to use? It's too like up in the air to say that you can say you can't say this thing, you can't say that thing. Like Absolutely. so the government has to take a very like like you can't just yes, like, it's do, completely, I don't know. you know what I'm trying what, to say. What will offend you as a human being is different than what will offend me. So you can't have subjective laws or leave it up to the mob or to special interests or any other group to say, okay, this is the group of people we can't say anything about, or these are the words you can't say, or these are the people that you account, can't accidentally misgender. And again, I say all of that within the framework of you should and hopefully will be respectful to people. You will hopefully treat people as individuals and be willing to have friends of all colors and ethnicities and all of that stuff. You guys have a question? No, it's okay. Yeah. Do you have a question? Do you have a question? Are you guys the problem? Can't tell. All right. I, I, think, I think you got the point there. I think you got the point there. Yes, it is a slippery slope. If you say, okay, we can't say this about X, someone else is going to say you can't say this either. Okay. And then I feel like you could get to a point where... Um, it's just like nothing can be said, and I you, feel like that's you actually kind of you you are the problem. If you got you almost got it. You almost got it. You almost got it, except for the word "not." Can we try that one? See, do you have a question, perhaps? Do, question. Group think, man. It's alluring. All right, we we can move on. We can move on. I was yeah. just going to say that I feel like it's once you open the door for one thing, it can be very dicey to enforce things without infringing on rights because then Absolutely. you could say that, like, oh, saying everyone should be equal is wrong. If you had, like, for example, if you had, like, a lot of people are concerned that Trump is a white supremacist. You guys ever played the quiet game? You're the quiet game. Let's see how long you can do it. If you have people saying, like, Trump's a racist, Trump's, like, a white supremacist, which is, like, a very fair point to say because I disagree with, like, a ton of the shit he says. He says, like, the stupidest shit ever. But if those people get in, like, the majority of government and then they're passing laws saying that you can't preach for equality, you can't say these things, like, I feel like it's, you can't just have these subjective laws, which I, like, that's you're, why I think the point you're right. trying to make because... You're completely right. Like, if you're pushing for people to make subjective laws, like, hate speech is always wrong, but then if you have, like, this majority fascist, like, or totally racist group in place, then they're going to try to pass, oh, well, you can't say everyone can be equal. Oh, now we're going to have, like, white supremacist laws in place. Is exactly. that, like, the so, point you're trying to make? <clears throat> that is the point I'm trying to make. You can't, you can't base laws on subjectivity. You have to base laws on equality. We should have laws in this country that make every single person in this room equal. It is as simple as that. What's that? Equality does not exist. So, uh, so can you give me uh, give me a question or something that I can respond to, and I'll I'll gladly do that. What, 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 all right, what? <laughs> what was the question? You're, you're allowed, I said, I, you, you asked me several times and I repeatedly said, yes, you're allowed to say hateful things. It sucks, but you're allowed to say hateful things. That, that's what happens. Okay, where are we? Down here? James. James. Here, we'll go here and then over there. Someone have a question over here? Hey, Dave. Um, How's it going? I'm actually a pretty liberal dude. Uh, a lot of my friends are in Turning Point, so I, I came to help them out. But, Great. That's a beautiful um, thing. <laughs> <laughs> she knows who your friends are. It's not these. Um, so what I, a lot of this event was 
supposed to be surrounding cultural appropriation. Yeah. Um, and I know that you didn't maybe get a chance to really dive into that. I know you talked about like the, the overarching themes of regarding the importance of free speech. Yeah. Um, but I know that there's, there's a lot of uh, differences when it comes to a college campus and, and how people feel. And I know that on this campus, um, you know, we can have our disagreements about what cultural appropriation means or, or what role it plays. Um, but there have been bias incidents. I think a, there's been, uh, you know, things, yeah, th things that have happened that have stemmed from racism. And, and I know that this is, shouldn't be a government policy maybe to be implemented, but what steps do you think the administration can take to make sure that we feel safe, but also just as, or if not more, equally important, um, people have the right to free speech and yeah. the right to think what they want. Well, I think the only thing that the government can do is sort of what it has done generally, which is make sure that we all have equal laws. You can't have laws that say X people can do this and Y people can do this. It's why marriage equality was a just thing. They wanted equal rights, yep. not separate rights. As for cultural appropriation, I mean, I would, I would say, do you think you should be allowed to put dreadlocks in your hair? Well, so, so my understanding of it was more to... The answer is yeah. yes. The answer well, is yes. You, you, yeah, the, well, the answer is yes. You can do whatever well, you want. You can do whatever you want with your body. Sure. It, your, it is your body. It's not their body. You can do whatever you want. Now, you can be respectful if you feel that's going to offend people and you want to know more about the history of dreadlocks sure. and all that. But you, if, you, if, you pass, if you pass the capacity, if you... <laughs> So I've never heard of that. I would that that's completely. So if that's what you're, I don't know about that specific instance. So you're telling me, you, you're giving me an anecdotal story that a hospital hired white people with dreadlocks, but not a black person with dreadlocks. I would need to know more about that story. But if you want to send me a link, I'll gladly look at it. I mean, I'll gladly look at it. Of course, a hospital shouldn't be looking at someone's skin color. Uh, see. You know what they do. You know how you so so what is what? So what is your what is your solution? What is your solution? You're saying government isn't the solution. He's asking you what is the answer to his question. Yeah. The solution is all you can do is create the conditions for more freedom and hopefully you can educate people to be better. That's all you can do. To, what? So, 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 yeah. So, so you have to treat you have to show people what just, freedom is. Just just to build off the points. I mean, I, my understanding was that cultural appropriation and, and especially the, the debates that we've had over it here yeah. have stemmed more from intentionally putting people down or, or attacking people. That's right. where a lot of the frustration, I think, has come from. Yeah. Um, my question, I guess, was more directed to, do you think that a university has a little bit more of a role to play um, than, than the government? Well, and, a university what, can have a code of conduct, right? Especially a private university yeah. can have all sorts of codes of conduct and say if you treat your fellow student this way or you treat your fellow student that way, that we are not going to allow you to be a part of this university or you won't be able to be part of the Greek system or whatever it is. Yeah. But also that's consistent with everything else I believe, which is that it should be about local control. So you should, every, in every situation, the best way for you to be governed is by your own community. Every Right, we shouldn't be handing off everything to the federal government. So I think one of the, one, what's that? You think you think right now, you think right now, if it was up to the states, we would have slavery? Well, yes, the fe yeah. I'll, well, I'll talk to you about it. I'm going to deny the Civil War. No, I'm not going to deny the Civil War. Up to the states. We still have separation. The beauty of the states, I would recommend, I would recommend uh, an interview I did with Randy Barnett, who's a constitutional law professor at Georgetown. And what he talks about is the beauty of the states is that because we have 50 states, you, if you don't like what's happening in your state, you can move to another state. You can move to another state. If, you, if California, I live in California, there, hold on. No. What's that? I, I'm not even really sure what we're debating here. 
I assure you I am against slavery. I am 100% for equality for everyone. So I don't, I don't know exactly what we're, what we're debating here. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, think, I appreciate I think we got the, that one. the discourse. Good, right on, brother. All right. Why don't we go this way? Go down here. Uh, yeah, could I just hear your thoughts on intellectual pluralism? Intellectual pluralism and like, in that we should have a plethora of ideas. Yeah, every idea should be able to compete in the marketplace. Yeah, of course. Well. Of course. I'm for all of these people expressing their ideas. What you can't do is just drown out other people from expressing theirs. All right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm for anything. I mean, look, you could tell me we could sit there. and Anyone here is welcome. I mean, that's why we do Q&As, right? It's for anyone to share their views, and then I can share my views, and then you go back and forth, and then you figure out what the best ideas are. That's the beauty of free speech. No, I'm not here to teach you guys what to think. If you disagree with me, that's great. I just want us to be able to live in the same society together. I mean, that's, that's it. We should have the same laws so that we can exist in the same society. But of course, of course we should be able to be debating ideas. you being on the left being progressives do you feel threatened when you leave here well generally speaking in america in 2018 the left and antifa is more violent than the same version on the right yeah but i'm not i, I don't think you're going to do i don't think you're going to do anything to me you don't seem to like me very much i'm not a victim i'll be all right i mean i'm pretty quick i i, I can move on my feet i'll be all right yeah, I don't think you are going to... Yeah. I, I, don't think any, I don't think there's any reason to believe that any of the people who have sat here respectfully and quietly... So you think people outside are going to come for the people in this room? For, On a regular basis, actually attack people of color. I do, or minorities, or people that are transgender. You're right, and we have laws against all of those things, as we should, as we should, as we should. So, we have laws about those things. I mean, it doesn't mean that, it, it doesn't mean that the system is perfect. It doesn't mean that the system is perfect, but we have laws about those things. Um, I really don't have a question for you because you don't answer them, so I'm just going to say this. Uh, you, you, said, you said earlier on that um, the Supreme Court had ruled that hate speech was not a thing. But we know the Supreme Court also ruled for uh, Plessy Ferguson, they ruled for um, Dred Scott, and they ruled for a ton of things that pretty much put people of color and um, people of color across the, uh, the United States in jeopardy. They've made us feel like we're second class citizens and they've actually legalized slavery. They did a lot of, th the Supreme Court did a lot of things that made people of color in, in, this, in this United States feel like they were not part of the, the country. So when you talk about how, um, when you talk about the Supreme Court doing this and doing that and showing that, um, that when you talk about the Supreme Court saying that we don't, um, that there's no such thing as, uh, as um, what do you call it again? As hate speech, it, it doesn't make any sense because the Supreme Court has no moral standing if they've been moving things that are wrong, which means that you have no point bringing up the Supreme Court as a moral standard of saying that something exists when it doesn't because the Supreme Court does not rule anything that makes any sense anymore. I, well, there, there was a lot of things in there that I didn't quite say, but I would agree that the Supreme Court in and of itself is not the moral arbiter and absolutely why, can, why they absolutely why, can, why, why well, because we're a nation of laws. We can debate, no, 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 we can debate, no, 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 hold on, hold on, I let you ask, Yeah. So, just so, just moving back on the first time when you came in and when you started talking, you talked about how um, we had the the, the 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 Statue of Liberty and how the Statue of Liberty said bringing the your your poor masses, all the masses, and it was separating. And then you went further on to say that um, we shouldn't have an open border and we shouldn't allow illegal immigrants into the country, which is basically just 
Well, it we doesn't make any sense. You're contradicting yourself. And then you talked about Candice Owens, and, and you said how Candice Owens was being supported by Kanye West and how that's a great thing. And then there's a, uh, there's a YouTube video of Can, uh, Candice Owens talking about how celebrities should not fucking speak because they, she doesn't care about their opinions. So basically, you're standing there and you're saying something that's hypocritical because the Candice Owens she's talking about doesn't think the celebrities have a right to speak, which means that you shouldn't even be using Kanye West as a moral standard or the Supreme Court as a moral standard because all these people are people we know that do stupid shit. So what you're saying, what you've been saying so far is based on crap because it makes no fucking sense. My friend, I, I assume you didn't watch my show this week. I did a video about... I did a video about how you can't take Kanye's word for gospel, but what he did do was give a little room. He gave wait, a, wait, little wait, wait, of, I, a little bit this of... Is the, this is the... My friend, I, I let you speak, so let me answer you and then we'll, we'll do it again. So that he that Kanye offered a little oxygen for people to think a little bit differently. In the video that I did just a few days ago, I said, I don't know what his political beliefs are and he might say something crazy tomorrow. So you can't take him as if he's the know-all and the end-all and the be-all. Then why bring him up? Well, because, peop because ideas matter, people matter. He's a, whether you like Kanye or not, he's a mover of culture. He's someone that moves culture. Wow. Yeah. I, I think the, the, the basic thing in this room right now is that we have people like you who go around talking on things they have no clue about. You I, think, I, I think I've had a pretty good handle on this stuff so far. Um, you, you don't. You don't. You pretty much don't understand the plights of people of color across the, across the country. So what what law do we have that, that is uh, against you that's not against me? Really? Yeah. Really? So, yeah. for, for example, um, there, were, there was a case of a, um, a student athlete, um, two student athletes that, commit, uh, that, that had a rape case. One was black and one was white. One got three months in sentence, the other one got 18 years. So that shows you, the one who got 18 years was black and the one who yeah. got three months I, was white. White yeah. people, excuse me, excuse me, white people in this country have been known to get less sentences for the same crimes committed as black people. So that shows that the justice system in itself is basically flawed. Well, which means I'm that they were reforming no, the justice system. I've done plenty of videos about I, that too. But, but you're just saying that we have laws and they work. So what's the whole point of reform? Why would you want to reform a law that works? You're basically speaking from two sides of your mouth. You don't know what you're talking about. We, uh, listen, my friend, I am completely down. Okay, we're not friends, fine. I, I am completely down to reform the prison justice system. I am completely down to reform that. Because I asked you, because laws and the justice system are not exactly the same thing. So wait, the, the laws don't work right now, but you're standing there and saying that the laws work, it works, but it doesn't. No, what you're talking about is that perhaps black people don't have access to better lawyers because of socioeconomic reasons and a zillion other things. No, it's not that? Okay, okay. All right, how you doing? <laughs> Good. Yeah, yeah. Can I hold it? Yeah. All right. Hi. Hi. Um, so I know that you mentioned that our country was not founded on identity politics. However, I want to note that women, people of color, and other mar marginalized identities were not written into history, and therefore in the foundation of our country for that matter. So my question here is how do you think everyone is equal and represented if this country was founded on the premises of exclusion? So. So I, I've talked about this a lot. Look, is there, is there any question that George Washington, that Thomas Jefferson, that many of the other founders owned slaves? Thomas Jefferson owned slaves till the day he died. He had an affair with at least one slave. While at the very, wh wait, hold on. While at the very same time, while at the very same time he was writing the laws that ultimately would free the slaves. So is he a, per is he a perfect man? Is he a perfect man? He is not. George Washington, the day he died, his, his half of the slaves were freed, but Martha Washington kept her half. Is that just? Is that just? Is that right? No. But these people, I would say this, go to the, the Jefferson Memorial in DC. It's a little off the beaten path. And, and, read, and read those documents there. And these flawed people, who were just people of their time, they were writing the documents that would ultimately give more freedom to more people than any other country in the history of the world. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean 
it doesn't mean that they were always right, and it doesn't mean that they, that they didn't have their own prejudices, but they, it means that they were people who grew up in a certain time. And if, if, if the goal is to always destroy the history to make a future that you think is better, you will lose a lot by getting rid of that. So I would say they were imperfect people who wrote some laws and wrote the basic foundation of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights that have guaranteed more freedoms to more people than anywhere else. I think... I do it. All right, last one. Last one, big finish, people. Yeah. So um, I just want to say real quick that Thomas Jefferson was the third president, right? And you're saying that him and Washington were writing laws to free slaves. But it wasn't until the 16th president that those slaves wasn't even, weren't even free. And we're on the 45th president, and we're still dying every day. There was just a person that was lynched two days ago. So I don't want to hear this bullshit about hate speech is not free speech, equality exists, nothing. Because this, it doesn't. For you, it does, because you have privilege. The fact that you can stand here and talk about the the fact that people can say slurs to you or whatever, and you can just walk outside, it's okay. No, if someone calls me the N-word, I can get shot. So don't be telling me right now that it doesn't exist, and that's all I have to say. On that note, all right, you know what, for real, guys, I, I've actually totally enjoyed this. This is, this is what it's all about. But, all right, settle down. You don't own me. You know what I mean? Relax, lady. Um, uh, I've actually really enjoyed this. This is what it's all about, and, and whether you disagreed with everything I said or you agreed, uh, we did a little something here, you know what? And, uh, and I, hope, I hope perhaps that I changed some of your minds, and perhaps some of those guys changed, changed your minds. And either way, either way, it's all good. As long as we don't walk out of here at each other's throats and hurting each other, then, then it's actually... Yeah, I, I, don't sense, I don't sense that any of these calm people... All right, I'll, I'll grant you that, guys. Guys, we're not going to create any acts of violence against any of these people here tonight. All right, well, I have enjoyed this for real. Uh, hopefully next time, Candace and, uh, and Charlie will join for the festivities. And uh, where do people get a beer here in New Hampshire? I'll find out about that. All right, thank you, guys.